All right, we got a 1996 Jeep that was brought in for a no start. Yesterday we checked the ignition coil for spark. We have no spark. We tried hooking a scan tool up to it. We had no communication yesterday. However, our battery was dead. So we charged the battery all night. We got a nice freshly charged battery. First thing we notice when we turn the key on, the fuel pumps are running all the time. You can hear it. It's running continuously, which shouldn't happen. The second thing we notice, we uh, ID the vehicle and we go to trouble codes and we try to get codes out of it. And what we're finding <coughs> is that we have a no communication problem. And yes, the key is on. So the next thing that we decided we're gonna do for ease and for speed is to just check a five volt reference circuit on one of the sensors to see if this computer's alive and talking to us. So we chose the TPS and uh, I'm gonna show you that real quick. We're gonna measure for a five volt reference on the TPS. Okay, we got the TPS unplugged. See the voltmeter? Is that better? Yeah. Got my voltmeter connected to ground. I've unplugged the TPS. I'm not worried about doing any TPS testing here. What I'm concerned about is do I have a reference voltage? And I don't even care which pin I'm going to. Again, I'm not jamming this into this connector. You don't want to spread these pins apart. I see this way too much. I'm just touching on the connector. I got a 0.07 on that one. I got a 0.41 on that one. And I got a 0 .09, 0.09 on that one. So what do we know? No 5 volt reference. It's not there. This computer is not alive. It's not talking to us. Our 5 volt reference circuit's not there. So we're looking for direction now. What we're going to do next is we're going to pull up a wiring diagram and we're going to figure out what all shares this 5 volt reference circuit and within this diagram we're also going to check to see what fuses the computer uses and needs for this system to operate so we're going to look for fuses and we're also going to focus on this 5 volt reference circuit but again what we know this computer is not alive that's why I can't talk to it with my scan tool and it might also be why my fuel pumps running all the time there is some type of malfunction going on within this computer system we know for a fact the computer is not totally dead because the fuel pumps running and the computer controls the fuel pump but it's a good indication that we could have some type of computer problem so we're gonna pull a diagram now okay so we're looking at the 5 volt reference circuit on this Jeep we want to see what's all tied into it we pulled up a wiring diagram Starting on figure one for this diagram, we're looking at our five volt supply. And that's right here. It's a white black wire. Highlight that. So you can see it. Got a good picture of that? We got it. Okay. And we're gonna follow that wire and see where it goes. Following the yellow wire, you can uh, just stay where you're at. It goes to 12, which is the next page. So we're going to go to figure two of three. What would we say it was, 12? Yeah. So come over here, we'll find our number 12 on this diagram, which is right here. Highlight this, goes to a splice, okay? So we're going to highlight those splices too, and we're going to follow everywhere where that circuit goes. Following the bottom of the page for these three, You see our map sensor, camshaft position sensor, crankshaft position sensor all share that same 5 volt reference. And then our other wire that we did not follow comes over here to the next page, next figure, which is 4. I like that. Here. Here we go. 
and it's my throttle position sensor. So we have four sensors that share the same 5 volt reference. TPS, MAP, camshaft, crankshaft sensor. What we're going to do is we're going to go back under the hood of the car and we're going to measure at the TPS where we were before, our 5 volt reference, and we're going to start unplugging these sensors one at a time and we're going to hopefully isolate where our sword's at. If we have all these sensors unplugged and we still don't have a 5 volt reference, then we're going to go after the fuses and check the fuses next. So that's the direction we're going. Okay? Got Paul. Alright, now that we've identified the four sensors that share the 5 volt reference, we're still back at the TPS. We're measuring the TPS 5 volt reference wire. And if you remember, looking at our wiring diagram, that it was in fact a white with a black wire. And you can see that that wire right there is, is white and black. And so that's the guy we're testing on the TPS. We didn't know which one it was before, now we do. And uh, this isn't uh, a larger diameter than the female here, so I don't have to worry about spreading the pin apart. I'm just resting my multimeter lead in that, in that uh, pin. And I'm reading 0.356, obviously we should be five volts. Next step, I'm gonna unplug the map sensor, which is up top. If that doesn't do it, then I'm going to unplug the cam, then I'm going to unplug the crank. Those are our four sensors, okay? Um, so, got to locate the map. We'll go to the map sensor next. So we're on the map sensor now. Uh, notice um, I haven't moved my multimeter off the TPS. I'm still measuring at the TPS. I don't need to move around to a different location. They're all sharing that same reference circuit. Um, something interesting though in, in the process of pausing this is that my voltage actually got lower on my reference circuit. I'm at .009 now, right? All right, so I'm gonna reach down, I'm gonna unplug the map sensor. I'm just gonna watch my voltage on my meter. And voltage came up a little bit, right? But still not five, okay? So how's my TPS, how's my map? TPS and MAP are not sorted, cam and crank are next, okay? Okay, same test. We're uh, on the cam sensor now, which is actually inside the distributor. It's a Hall Effect three wire. Uh, if you look at the very bottom of the screen, you see the three wire connector. I'll point it out to you before my hands get in the way. It is that guy. Oh, shadow here. It is this component right here. Let me pull the connector up. Can you see that connector? You can't. There's my shoulder. Kind of hard to show you the connector and the voltmeter at the same time. It's this connector right here. I'm just going to reach down and unplug it. There's my cam sensor connector. Unplugged and we're still at what? 0 0.085. So how's my cam sensor? It's good. Got to do the crank sensor now. Crank sensor is a little, uh, little easier to get to or show. Um, it's, it's in the back. I'm gonna pause it. All right, we're going after, going after the crank sensor now. The connector is right here. Uh, it's on the side of the bell housing on the passenger side. There's a three-pin connector, and so Mr. Paul Danner. Do you leave all the sensors disconnected when you unplug them, or do you reconnect them? So the question was, do I leave the sensors disconnected as I'm going through this, or do I plug them back in? Absolutely, you can leave them unplugged. No reason to plug them back in. We're just looking for our reference voltage to come back. In fact, I prefer leaving them unplugged during this test, because if we do this last one and our 5 volt doesn't come back, that doesn't mean that we don't have a short in the harness somewhere, and you're going to have to unplug all the connectors again to check for a short to ground, so we're gonna leave them unplugged. So I'm gonna reach down and I'm gonna unplug this crank sensor connector. And our voltmeter reading with the crank sensor unplugged. Let's get this in the screen. Crank sensor is now unplugged. And what are we reading? 
0.085. So how are my sensors that share this 5 volt reference circuit? They're not shorted. They're not shorted, that's right. Okay? So next step is we're going to have to check this circuit for a short in this 5 volt reference circuit. I'll show you how we'll do that. We're also going to want to check fuses as we mentioned before to this computer system. But that's how you check and isolate for a shorted sensor on the 5 volt reference circuit. Our, our sensors, all four of them, the MAP, the TPS, the crank, the CAM, they're all good. They're not sorted out, that's not our problem. So we move on. Okay, continuation of our sorted 5 volt reference, well potentially sorted, we're not positive yet. And uh, what we've done is we've unplugged all the sensors and we said that uh, none of the sensors are sorted. So the next thing we noticed is there is some type of aftermarket power control module on this vehicle and uh, that always makes you nervous. But what I want to show you guys, and, and we're going to focus on that, but what I want to show you guys is how to identify the wire on the computer. And what I've done, the key is off and what we're looking at on the harness is here is a, here is a white black wire right here. And what I do to identify wires is you can go by numbers, but a lot of these vehicles, it's hard to see numbers. What I do is I'll look at the wire next to it. Can you zoom on, on where I'm at right here? And that's this button right there, yeah. And, and it, can you zoom right where my finger's at? And you can see, you can see a white black wire right here. Hold on, it's not, it's not focused. Back up a little bit, right there. There's a white black wire, and then what I do is I look at my diagram and I look at both sides of what's what's on it. Uh, this is a black with a white, and this one's black with a pink, and that's not my sequence, so that's not the correct white black wire that we're chasing after. I looked at this harness, I didn't see a white black wire. Go over here to this one, and you can see a white black wire right here, and that just pops out. There is a white black wire right here and right next to the white black wire is a gray with a black on that pin and on the other side of this white black, let me pull it out so you can see it, is a tan with a black. So we have a white black, a tan, a tan with a black and a gray with a black that's the sequence on my wiring diagram. This is my 5 volt reference wire right here. So is this circuit totally isolated right now with that unplugged? Is it? So everywhere that that white black wire goes right now is completely unplugged, correct? All right, one of the things that we want to do is we want to uh, get this aftermarket thing out of here when we do this check. So I'm going to unplug this guy, really probably where our problem is. And uh, what I'm going to do is show you how to do an ohm test for a short to ground here. You can stay right where you're at, I'm just going to talk. My meter's already connected to ground when I was doing my voltage checks. So I'm going to switch, I'm going to switch my meter to an ohm scale. So I'm reading, is that okay? Mm -hmm. um, that's a diode. I'm going to go to an ohm scale, and I'm on an auto ranging ohm scale. So as long as I'm not touching a ground, that'll stay like this. This is what it will look like if I touch a ground. I'm just going to go right to the AC uh, bracket, and that would not be a good reading for what I'm doing. Okay? That means there's continuity to ground in this circuit. There shouldn't be. It should be OL. So I'm going to go down to the harness connector. I'm going to go to my white black wire which is this one right here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to back probe this. All right? And take a look at my meter. And what do we read? Is there a short to ground in this white with a black wire circuit? No, there is not. So externally, everything's good, okay?